Hi guys, today I'd like to talk briefly about why rudiments are still important in 2019. Now, uh, there's been a lot of criticism of rudiments lately that I've seen, and drummers, it seems like, are splitting into two camps. The pro-rudiment camp, who are mostly just marching guys and old people and, you know, weirdos like me. And then there's, like, the everyone else who thinks, oh, you know what, uh, rudiments aren't that interesting, and they just pigeonhole me, and they make me sound like everyone else, and I got to be this good without rudiments, why do I need them now? That, that sort of attitude. And the people who are in the middle are increasingly rare. And unfortunately, I think that's going to continue as a trend. But I'm trying, personally, to stop that. Obviously, I have this book that I published, 850 plus rudiments in here. Um, and the reason that these are still useful to you today is because of a basic point about rudiments that I think most rudiment critics don't understand. And it is that rudiments are not in order to be forced into your playing. They don't exist in order for you to sound like everyone else. Not anymore, anyway. Um, they exist such that you have the capacity in your hands and in your feet in, in this day and age to play whatever you want, whatever creatively flows out of your mind. You want to have the ability, the flexibility of technique, the capacity for the you know combinations of strokes to play what you want to play. Not that you have to play what's in this book when you're playing an actual song, but if you can play some of the stuff in the book or on the you know normal rudiment sheet, you will have an easier time playing what you want to play, right? It's, it's all about individualization of the techniques so that you can get to what you want. Now, I think John Pratt said it best, the rudiments are just exercises. The strokes are the rudiments of drumming. And what he means by strokes is there are like, I call it seven basic things you can do on the drums. You know, single strokes, double strokes, triple strokes, buzz strokes, up, strokes, down strokes, free strokes, right? There's only a few things you can do. And if you're not good at combining those different strokes into different patterns, you will have trouble playing the, the rhythms that you conceive of in your mind on the actual drums. So rudiments are the intermediary between basic strokes and full-fledged drumming at this day and age. And so you could use something else to get there, but why bother? Rudiments already exist. There are more of them than you can shake a stick at, so don't reinvent the wheel. You just use the rudiments to get from one place to another. And then you can change them, you can recombine them, you can discard the ones you don't like or don't think sound good to you. Um, but it is a very individualized thing, drumming. You want to sound like you, but the rudiments still help you get there. And so uh, I think Bonham was quoted as saying, you can't hear a triple paradiddle, so what's the point of it? Well. I mean, to directly respond to uh, Mr. Bonham, the triple paradiddle is not for the sound, it is for the switch of lead hand, any type of paradiddle, right? So if you're going from right-handed lead and you need to go to left-handed lead for the next phrase you're doing, a paradiddle switches the lead hand on the downbeat. So right there, it is a functional purpose. Yeah, you can't hear it, the audience doesn't care, but it's good for you, okay? And, uh, and if you don't want to use paradiddles, then don't. Go ahead. No one's forcing you to use them. There are no drum police. But I still think that practicing rudiments, even in 2019, is a viable way to get from the basic skills to real playing. And it's just a time-tested and obviously, you know, useful way that, you know, thousands or millions of drummers have gotten from that point to that point, right? It is still taught because it still works. And no one has ever come up with anything that is better um, for the large majority of people. Obviously, rudiments change over time. We've discarded some, we pick up new ones, that's why this book is so big. Um, but you can still get to uh, where you want to go using rudiments, and that's why I still think we should teach them. So, uh, those anti-rudimenters, I think, are just misunderstanding the concept. And they're trying to frame their uh, either inability to do them, their unwillingness to do them, or their like somehow distrust of them as being rational and you know them being smarter than the rest of us whereas it's just them not understanding why rudiments exist and what you can do with them to actually play less like everyone else to have your own style uh, even if you're just a groove player rudiments can still help you function at the level that you want okay so that's why rudiments exist in 2019 uh, so again, you can pick up my book, Amazon or HudsonMusic.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.